When I was going to primary school, we had a big GA, what we call the sports pitch, GA pitch, out the, the side of the school. And um, at the end of it was no man's land. It was where they dumped the grass and where invariably from late spring on, there'd be nettles about yay high. And it's also where maybe some of the neighboring streets tossed in glass bottles and used syringes and who knows what. It was like, it was just, you didn't go in there, right? It was an absolute, like, it was a dump, the dump at the, at the end of the pitch. So if someone like playing football gave the, the ball a big toe and the ball went in there, you just left it there, right? Uh, so and the whole pitch would look at you with disdain and scorn, but that's such it was. You couldn't, you just, it was, it was impenetrable, right? It was, especially for a young fella. Uh, <clears throat> so it was fairly obvious that no one would want to go in there. There was nothing to be gained from going in there, okay? Our first reading from Deuteronomy sets out, it sounds like such an obvious command. It sounds so straightforward and so plain that you wonder why anybody would have any sort of an issue with it at all. Moses said to the people, so inspired by God, these are the words of God, see, today I set before you life and prosperity, right? You can have that, or you can have death and disaster. Which would you like? <laughs> All right. Life and prosperity or, or, or death and disaster? You, you, you choose. Which, I mean, it, doesn't, it really doesn't take much deliberation at all. I think I'd prefer life and prosperity. Okay? Life and prosperity or death and disaster? Now, so we start to clarify how we can attain this life and prosperity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin on you today, if you love the Lord your God and follow his ways, Love God, do what he says. <clears throat> Love God, follow his ways. And then to clarify it, if you keep his commandments, follow his ways, keep his commandments, same kind of idea, right? We're doing what he says, obedience. His laws, his customs, you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to make your own. Okay? So it's, it's fairly straightforward. God wants to give us life, prosperity, not necessarily that he wants to make us really rich here, because that's entirely irrelevant to our happiness, honestly. Uh, <clears throat> prosperity in the deepest sense. Now, look, I think he doesn't want us to be starving either, but <clears throat> it's not that money does not equal happiness, so let's not confuse this gospel with the prosperity gospel. Uh, he wants us to be happy. He wants us to have what we need, and most importantly, he wants heaven for us. Our ultimate happiness will never pass. Okay, <clears throat> now, as is always necessary, the flip side. If your heart strays, if you refuse to listen, if you let yourself be drawn into worshipping other gods and serving them, I tell you today, you will most certainly perish. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I set before you. Life or death? Blessing or curse? Choose life. It's funny the Lord even has to say that, right? I said before you, life or death? Blessing or curse? And it's like he's whispering it like, choose life. That's the one you're supposed to choose, right? Choose life. You know, so this is a, it's a very pro-life gospel in its own way. But it's just, it's so obvious that what God asks us to do is good for us. God's plan for us is good, but there is an alternative. We don't have to do God's will. We don't have to, okay? We can choose to do other things, but there are consequences. So I can choose to not do God's will, okay, fine. Well, not fine. You can do it, but it's just like walking through those nettles and going up to no man's land. To what end? For what gain? For what? It leads to death. You know, it just, it doesn't work. So in our own lives, <clears throat> I think there's a, it can be difficult to kind of very quickly scan our lives and see, are, are, are we living this or not? You know, are, are we living this, this gospel or this, this reading, this, this, these commandments of God from Deuteronomy? Are we living it or not? And what I find interesting is a quick test to see where our priorities lie, a quick test to see where our faith is at, I think is a quick test, 
not the, necessarily the best, but a quick one, is to look at how we use our time. Time. Because we will give our time to what's most important to us. Right? The amount of time we give to uh, lounging around and watching TV and uh, relaxing, this is time given to me, right? To, for, again, a certain amount of relaxation is okay. <clears throat> Excessive relaxation is laziness. So then this amount of time that I've been given to me, I just, I'm going to use it because it makes me feel relaxed and, you know, it's, it's easy. You only have to kind of press a button. Up comes the channel. And then you just sit there. It's great. You know? So we can spend an excessive amount of time there. So that's not to say necessarily that TV has become our God, but my own pleasure has become my God. How much time do we give <coughs> even to fitness and gyms and walks and runs and all those kind of things? Again, they're, they're good on their own. It's when any of these things become excessive, they become problematic. Uh, you know, spiritual life, healthy life in general, it's all about balance, okay? A certain amount of exercise is good. Too much exercise can actually, you know, lead to muscular atrophy or muscular tiredness or fatigue, whatever it's called. Okay, so uh, a certain amount of these things is okay. A certain amount of relaxation is good. Too much re relaxation is, is, is laziness, sloth. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. A certain amount of work is good. Doing nothing but work is bad. Okay, so balance in, in these things. Where do I put my time? So if I just ask myself really, really frankly, how much time do I give to God? How much time do I give him? And people would say, well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a good person. I, I, I recycle and I go for walks three times a week and I take really good care of my dog and, and once I saw some rubbish on the road and I picked it up and I put it in the bin. So <clears throat> I'm a good person. And I think, yes, that's nice that you do those things. How much time do you give to God? Time. Quantify it. <clears throat> How much? Well, I'm, I'm spiritual. Great. Yeah, yeah. So is the devil. Um, how much time do you give to God? How much time do you give him? Right? You can't, you, we can't just kind of classify ourselves as I'm a good person or I'm, you know, I love the environment or you know, I'm healthy, I'm a good citizen, whatever it is. That's, that's, you're not, that's not the question you're being asked. How much time do you give to God? How much time do you give him? How much time are you spending in prayer? Now, I know online mass, <clears throat> kind of ironic I'm saying this here, but online mass, it's not, it's not exactly a substitute for mass. It, it's the best we can do considering the circumstances. But if and when, and then this, this whole COVID thing will pass, or, but even beforehand, how much time did I give the Lord? You know, is it a kind of a minimalist, kind of give the Lord the shortest mass possible in and out? Uh, was it kind of a, as regards prayer as well, rip through the rosary if I prayed it at all, as quick as I could? Uh, or what kind of quality time am I giving God? Do I give him, like we meditated a couple of days ago, the, the, the leftovers of my life, just whatever time, maybe a last second in the day, just kind of a rushed prayer, or am I giving God quality time? And what's wonderful about this is that God is being so frank and honest with us here. He's not telling us that uh, this is going to be a walk in the park, right? The, the, the corresponding gospel given to us today. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself. Take up his cross every day and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life, for my sake, that man will save it. So the Lord is being really honest, which I think, which, which we need. We need to be told uh, right at the beginning that this is going to involve sacrifice, right? This isn't going to be easy, but it is so incredibly worth it. We have one or two people in our house here who don't like injections. Don't like syringes and needles and all them things, uh, understandably. And yet, which one of us, like, if we needed an injection, especially, uh, uh, you know, going to the dentist, if you don't like needles, going to the dentist, that's going to make the whole procedure an awful lot more painful. Okay, so you're, who doesn't want anesthetic, okay, before surgery? So there's a little discomfort. It is kind of a weird feeling to have 
metal pushed into your veins. That's just not exactly natural. Uh, but once that's done, and then things go numb, and they can do the surgery, whatever it is, why on earth would we renounce <laughs> that little discomfort for the advantage of having a tumour removed or an abscess removed or whatever it may be. That's such a, an insufficient comparison to the crosses that we carry here on earth in comparison to all of eternity with God. Okay, this, 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 this life to the full, this, I said before you, life and prosperity, death and disaster, this life, this life, this prosperous and eternal life in heaven. But there are crosses. There are crosses. And so we ask the Lord today to strengthen us in our crosses, but always that even in them we may lift our gaze to the Lord. Not staring down at, at, at our cross and how heavy it is and how hard it is. And there are absolutely uh, legitimate crosses. Sure, our, our, our prayer list here grows every day of people who, who are ill or have family members who have passed away. So the, the crosses are very, very real. But they too pass. And so we hold our gaze high, knowing that when all of this has passed, when our time here is done, that God has called us to live with him in all eternity. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God, if you love the Lord and follow his ways, if you keep his commandments, his laws and his customs, you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to make your own. Amen.